Hi there, my name is Desiree Dickerson. I'm a, a former postdoc at IST Austria and I'm also a clinical psychologist. Now, I spend my time these days working with, with academic institutions, research institutes, universities, etc., um, helping them support the mental health and well being of their students and faculty. And I was actually due to be at IST Austria today giving a talk um, to you all. And instead, I'm on day 22 of lockdown in Spain in an apartment with two small children. And I have to say that my mental health and well-being has never been so thoroughly tested. Um, now, you might not have children at home, but I should imagine that, well, a pandemic in general is probably enough to put a, a number of us uh, to increase the anxiety and stress that, that a number of us are feeling right now. So I thought I'd jump on here and offer you a few a few tips, a few pointers to how we can best manage our 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 mental health and well-being right now and how to try and, and, and maintain some degree of productivity. Now, the first thing I want to say is that that there's no one size fits all for, for, for managing a situation like this. There's some of you, sometimes we can be caught feeling like we're, we're blowing this all out of proportion and other people seem to have it so much more under control. And other times we think that we're doing just fine and then the stress or the emotion of it all catches us off guard. The first thing to remember is that each of the, us come to this experience with different filters and with our own way of processing information. And that means that our expectations, our experiences, our worries, our fears, our day and the day-to-day -day stresses are going to be different for each of us. And that's okay. Whatever you're feeling right now, the experiences, your emotions are okay. It's okay to feel like this is hard. And it's also okay to feel like this is hard to get any work done. So the first point that I really want to make is that we really need to manage our expectations. So those memes, those those posts going, doing the rounds at the beginning of this where, you know, Shakespeare managed to write King Lear and and Macbeth and then Anthony and Cleopatra in the year that he was in quarantine or that Newton managed to lay the foundations for calculus, they suggest that we should be upping the ante on our productivity levels. And many of you may feel like that's that's not really realistic and that doesn't capture how you've been feeling and that in fact you're feeling really unproductive right now and you're not alone in that we are many of us are feeling are, are, are juggling a thousand balls in the air whether it's family at home whether it's lab members and students who are struggling or whether you know it, you've just had your whole experimental design ruined your your animal lines culled whatever it is for you there's a significant stresses going around at the moment and we can't, first and foremost, I have to say that we need to manage our expectations. We can't underestimate the degree to which our cognitive bandwidth is being eaten up right now by, by this pandemic. Now, someone is drilling in the room next door and i going to keep going. Otherwise, I will, my, the perfectionist in me will, will do this a thousand times over. So I apologize if that's noisy. Hopefully they will stop. Now... What I want to say, I mean, this is not likely to be the writing retreat that you hoped. You know, that when in the first few days of awesome, I'm going to get, I'm in lockdown, I'm going to pump out that, that, that first chapter or that manuscript I've been sitting on for four months. Be realistic with your expectations. Difficulty concentrating, low motivation, distractibility are completely reasonable and healthy responses at this time. So go easy on yourself and set re reasonable expectations for yourself. Um, if you're feeling exhausted or distracted or unproductive that's reasonable right now so just go easy um, adaptation to this new normal is going to take some time sadly we may find ourselves in isolation for long enough to adjust, adjust to this new rhythm of, of remote work and isolation but we do need to be realistic in the goals that we set ourselves especially in these early days so make them small make them achievable set yourself up for some wins however small they are at the moment staring at your screen and willing yourself to write when you just can't stay focused is not helping your productivity so so go set, set small goals and, and make them achievable um, the other thing I want to say is managing your expectations for those around you okay if you're a PI with postdocs and PhDs in your charge you can't know what their experience is during this time so please measure your expectations set boundaries together, set limits for, for what sort of work they want to achieve and how, how possible and how capable they feel at this time. Please listen, please acknowledge that your experience with this pandemic will not be the same as the other people. Likewise, if you're a student, a postdoc, 
manage your expectations of your PI at this time, okay? We are not all able to be our best selves during pandemics and we need to cut each other some slack and be compassionate, okay? Everybody is, as I said, dealing with this as the best that they can and we are all in this together, okay? So again, uh, that first point is just simply being reasonable with expectations and being compassionate with yourself and with other people. My second point that I really want to try and impress upon you is that we need to build a solid foundation to manage our mental health and well-being right now. If we want to be as productive as we can, then there are certain things that we can do to, to, at the moment, our threshold for tipping into sort of that sense of overwhelm, that feeling of, of, of paralysis, I can't focus, I can't work, is lowered right now because of everything that's going on around us. Now, if we... We can actually move that threshold through managing the, those foundational factors, things like sleep. Right now, our, our immune system needs us to be sleeping well, okay? It will help your immune system, but it's critical also for your mental health and well-being. So if you're getting stressed out, that tends to mess with and disrupt your, your, your sleep as well. So things like prioritizing your sleep and prioritizing good sleep hygiene um, are key. That means no blue lights before bed when you... When you, when you use your phone before bed, you're messing with the quality of the sleep that you're going to have. You, you limit the amount of, of uh, or, and the degree and time spent in, in sort of sleep, um, in, in those, um, oh, brain fry, in stage four sleep, that's what I want to say, in, in, um, in those deeper restorative aspects of your, of your sleep cycle. So be careful with that. Also go to bed and, and wake up at the same times each day. It can be really tempting to sleep in because you've got no core cool reason to get up and catch that shuttle into IST. But really, uh, if you want to, to, your productivity cycles throughout the day do depend on, on, on your, on, on your sleep wake cycles and on, um, how well you manage those. So, so getting up at the same time each day sets you up to maintain a good routine for your productivity and 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 looks after your well-being and sleep better. Exercise is another factor. Make sure that you're trying to find some way of getting moving. You can't sit and stew in in those stress hormones. You're marinating in, in stress hormones and and excess glucose while you're trying to work. If you're not getting up and moving um, and exercising, so do 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 find a way to do that. Um, if for us, we're not even allowed outside to go for a run or go for a bike ride. So we've had to get really creative. We've invented ninja training where we basically pelt or throw cushions at our children as hard as we can. And while they duck and weave and move around, around couches and those sorts of things. It's a great workout for us as well. And it relieves a lot of the tension and gives everyone a good laugh. So I promise my children are fine and unharmed in these, in these exercises. But uh, you really need to find a way to release that, that stress and that tension. Nutrition is another thing. It can be really tempting to lean on alcohol or other stress relieving um, vices at this time. It's going to mess with your sleep. It's going to mess with your productivity ultimately, and it's it's going to increase your anxiety and your your and decrease your ability to deal with stress in the long run. So, be conscious about how you choose to manage your stress. Socializing as well is critical for our well being. No matter how much you say you're an introvert, we need people. We are we are um, social beings. So really trying to you really don't discount the amount of passive socializing that we do during our day to day the the waiting for the the shuttle in the mornings the the quick coffee on the bridge we're we're engaging with people throughout our day most of the time so find ways to do that given that we're not allowed to engage with them in 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 real in real time in real person um, in real space okay so so lab groups find ways to connect with each other maybe set up regular daily checks also allows you to set that intention Oh man, this is not helpful. Sorry. Um, it allows you to set the the intention for what you hope to achieve, and um, and it allows you that connection with other people. So reach out to other people, um, especially there'll be some of you that are really isolated. Some of you maybe on up on IST campus who who are really without family and without your your friends. Um, so please look out for them as well. Make sure you're reaching out to these people. Um, critically, I would say that that. In order to manage stress, so those things are, are about managing our, 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 that threshold, right? And, and trying to, to give ourselves the best opportunity to do, do the work and manage our stress as best we can. The other thing that I would say is what do we do when we get into those moments of overwhelm? Because they will 
happen they're likely to happen given these given given everything that's going on so what happens when we get to that point where we're just feeling overwhelmed where we're paralyzed and can't get that work done and we're, we we don't know what to do what i'd say is really tune into your your red flags know your red flags for me i realize that i'm at that point or i've already passed that point when i notice that, that i've got tension in my jaw when i notice that i've got tension in my shoulders and i'm those are my red flags of, of where I'm, I'm reaching overwhelm. And I actively, consciously work to settle those things. Now, it might seem trivial to, to do something like that, but actually the reality is those physical sensations are part of a bigger cycle that either that either escalates and spirals into, into feeling out of control and dis- emotional distress or that we can control. So within that cycle are our thoughts, Thoughts, perhaps at the moment, like oh, I can't. Why can't I concentrate? You know, this is really frustrating. Sensations, as I say, like the the tension in your jaw, the tension in your shoulders. It'll also, or, or for you, it might be a, a increased heart rate. It might be a shallow breathing. It might be jitteriness or an upset stomach. The, everyone feels these things differently. The, you'll also have feelings, emotions, right? Like frustration and and anger or irritation or disappointment and worry. And you'll also have actions that you engage in. Those are the four components of that cycle. Thoughts, physical sensations, feelings and emotions, and actions that we engage in. Now, for you, that action might be constantly checking the, the stats on, on COVID and, or, or it might be eating, constantly finding yourself in the kitchen with your hand in something sweet or whatever it is. Our actions are there to try and lower the, that level of tension. The problem is, is that... They're often band-aid approaches. They might help you feel better right then and there, but they often don't help in the long run. So what we want to do is try and acknowledge acknowledge that cycle for what it is, that our, our thoughts, our feelings, our physical sensations, and our actions are amplifying or escalating that cycle and increasing our level of tension. Now, the cool thing about a cycle is, is that you can target it at any one of those four points in order to try and de-escalate it. So for me, if I'm, I feel it really physically. So for me, I really concentrate on targeting that tension in my jaw and that tension in my shoulders. And by doing that, I'm de, I'm, I'm, I'm listening that feedback loop, that, 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 that amplification of, of the, of the stress. Um, you can also target your thoughts and your thinking processes, right? So that a thought, like, as I said, why can't I concentrate or why is this so hard? or What's my problem? You know, it, there's a degree we need to have a level of, of self-compassion and, and, and think about the way we're talking to ourselves at this at this point in time. So why can't I concentrate? Well, because there's a pandemic going on and I'm struggling and 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 maybe I need five minutes break, like an active five minutes break, five minute break that allows me to feel better to 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 actually lower that stress level maybe it's going outside on the de- on the terrace if you've got one and and breathing for five minutes maybe it's engaging in some of that belly breathing for me I use a box breathing which is really helpful to regaining a proper rhythm um, and breathing properly so it's breathing in for four counts holding it for four counts breathing out for four counts holding it again for four counts doesn't matter what count you do as long as there's a rhythm to it. So that can really help in, in again, lowering those physical sensations, but also giving you a, a point of reference as a chance to to stop, check in with yourself how, you know, this is feeling overwhelming right now. What do I need in this moment? Now, also other ways of reframing those thoughts, thoughts that come to mind is I can't do this. Well, maybe it's I can't do this right now. Or maybe something's feeling really hard or, or, or you're struggling to get to get those first that first you know line written on a document you know i can't do this yet what do i need to get there well maybe i need to just brain dump maybe i need to set up headings you know maybe that's all i'm capable of in this hour is just give myself four headings that i'm going to then work to the next time i come to sit down again it's managing managing your expectations and and being realistic with what you can and can't achieve at this time i want to say also that that those strong feelings they can come and they they probably will come at certain times for you. This is, as I said, it's justifiable that this feels overwhelming at times. But remember that emotions are like waves, right? They they come and there'll be a peak to that emotion that feels feels really challenging and really difficult in that moment. But that, as with all waves, they, they will subside. As with all emotions, they do subside. So remember that to breathe and remember to know that it's okay that you feel these feelings right now. Isolation is difficult 
um, worrying about our families and, and what's, what's, what's happening to the economy or, or whatever it is for you. There's reasonable stresses at this time. So it's un, what is unreasonable is to think that you can just truck on, that you can just keep going, that you can be as productive as you always are right now. Okay, so um, I will say that if you notice that you are, are struggling with negative thoughts and feelings that feel too much, that you don't feel like you're coping, then it is time to check in with someone. You do have the wonderful Samira um, Bike. I can't pronounce that or I don't know if I'm doing her justice, Samira Bike or, or Hilda Janssen. Okay, and, and Janssen's and, and these people are, are there for you. Make sure you reach out and talk to somebody. Um, what else can I tell you? The other thing I want to touch on just briefly is if you are, I know that many of you will be wanting to remain productive during this time. Just be conscious that your productivity, often we do, we sit at our desks and we just, we sit there and we, and we keep working, we keep working, we keep working. And what we do tend to see is a productivity diving, right? And, and, and we stay and for two hours, three hours, only a little bit of that time is actually really productive and the rest of it is just decreasingly so so what I would argue is work in short stints work in short breaks set yourself a small goal to achieve in 20-25 minutes and then take a break and in that way you're maintaining your clarity of thought your your ability to focus for a lot longer and you're and you'll be working at a higher higher quality of productivity um, that is all I will say for now that's that's um, probably more than enough uh, I would say stay compassionate with yourselves, stay compassionate with, with those around you and look after yourself. And I send you lots of love from Spain. Take care.